What's happening everyone, Max Forte with another video. 15 years ago, Hermes gave us a fragrance called Terre de Hermes. And since then we have not had a standalone or new masculine release except for flankers over the past 15 years. And today, I'm going to share with you their latest in H24, which is the latest masculine release from Hermes. If you guys want to know all about this fragrance release, stick around. It's coming up right now. Welcome back to another fragrance review. I'm Max Forte. Today, of course, we're talking about the new H24 by Hermes. Now, this particular fragrance release, as you can see, I got the 50 ml. It's available in two sizes. It is Eau de Toilette. And it is the new standalone fragrance release for men, you know, since 2006 when they had Terre de Hermes. Available in two main sizes, 50 ml, which is the one I got here. Recyclable case, sustainability, refillable bottles, all that good stuff, which you can read at Hermes.com. I'll have it linked below. And the 50 ml will run $80 USD, or if you go with 100 mil, which is the size up, will run $105 USD. The box itself is going to be this cement gray kind of a vibe, nothing to it with this little, you know, green, lime green kind of a lining going around the box. The bottle itself has this really cool contour. The uh, batch code is going to be etched in a glass right here. My batch code is going to be, just for those crazy batch code people out there, 02712. Uh, the cap is going to be metal with the plastic uh, lining. Not very heavy. Sprayers are actually pretty good. I'm actually wearing this today. It is my scent of the day. I have the dry down on my hands as well on this test trip here. We're going to get into the fragrance itself, what it smells like, longevity, performance, and all that good stuff. So the opening here right off the bat is going to be very bright, very sparkly, very fizzy, very green, a little bit herbal. When you look at the note breakdown, it's very simple, but there's a lot more notes to this fragrance. Of course, as we all know, fragrance brands will not list every single note. They're going to give you like the main structure, uh, the main spinal cord of the scent, if you will, with a pyramid, you know, top, mids, and, and you know, heart and base notes. But all in all, there is going to be citruses up top, lemon, limes, or perhaps grapefruit. It is very uplifting and bright in the beginning, which doesn't stay on for too long. It is, after all, an aromatic green scent. The, the nose behind this one here is going to be Christina Gel, which is following the footsteps of one incredible master perfumer, Jean-Claude Elena. So you can definitely attest in this fragrance right off the bat, if you follow Jean-Claude Elena's work, she definitely took notes and she's definitely trying to pay homage or stay within those terrains, you know, the, 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 the Jean-Claude Elena years, it is definitely present here. It's going to be herbal, it's going to be green, it's going to be a little fruity. There are some abstract components here, like the metallic notes that we'll talk about in the beginning. But all in all, definitely something that I've smelled before. It's not groundbreaking, it's not trendsetter, and it's not anything brand new. The good news is it's not going to be Umbroxen based, it's not going to be another blue scent, it's not following footsteps to, to the trends, the Your Sauvages, Blue de Chanel's, you know, Vanilla, Tonka, you know, Umbroxen, none of that stuff is present here, which is quite good news. Perhaps what I'm getting here up top, that green fruity nuance that I'm talking about, is probably borrowed elements from this fragrance here from 2009, which is Concentré Verte d'Orange, or d'Orange orange Verte from their, you know, signature collection. I definitely get that green, orangey, you know, fruity kind of a vibe in this particular fragrance, especially in the beginning, you know, within the first 40 minutes or so, that will kind of go into the background. It's going to be there, but it's not going to be as present anymore as it was in the first 30 to 40 minutes. Now, once you get into the heart of the fragrance, Narcissus plays a very key role in the fragrance, given this floral, sweet kind of a nuance, a little bit yellowish, think jasmine, think hyacinth. Those kind of floral notes are what I'm getting here in the heart, which is quite good, but also gives this androgynous kind of feel to the fragrance. Even though this was geared toward masculine, uh, you know, public, I definitely can see a lady pulling this off quite nice. In fact, I think a lot, a lot more ladies will like this fragrance more than guys will. And, you, and you'll understand that as we talk more about this fragrance. So the, the floral aspect that I'm talking about here, this yellow tinge, sweet floral aspect, kind of like a hyacinth, kind of like a jasmine feel, a little bit sweet with the hyacinth, um, Narcissus kind of a feel, is very predominant here in the middle of the fragrance, in the heart of the scent. As we get into the base, you know, the dry down of the fragrance, I couldn't help but notice Tons of familiarities and similarities to this fragrance to a lot of other fragrances that I've tried before, especially from the house of Hermes. And by that, I'm talking about the Jardin collection, in particular, Un Jardin sur le Nil or Un Jardin sur le Toit. I think the vegetal vibe, 
uh, that, that vegetable kind of a feel, the tomato that you have, I think tomato leaf in one of these. So the herbal components, the green, the vegetal kind of, um, you know, garden kind of a feel that you get with those fragrances. Very abstract and watercolor feel that we get with those fragrances from Jean-Claude Elna. I think, I really feel that Christina Gel took notes and inspiration in those Jardin fragrances. In fact, I think H24 could have easily been one of, uh, you know, other creations from Un Jardin Collection. I think they could have easily made this fragrance into those, you know, Jardin collections. I think it could have been, you know, another iteration of that collection. The only difference that I see here from the green nuances, the herbal nuances, the vegetable nuances, you know, the green herbal feel is going to be that metallic vibe that you get with this fragrance, especially now as you get into the base of the scent. The note of sclarine, which was created synthetically to be a part of this composition, adds this mineral slash metallic vibe to the fragrance, which is nice. I don't particularly love it, but it's quite nice and it's quite different. It is a different thing that's done in this fragrance, which actually made it quite unique. I would also like to, to talk about the rosewood that's infused in this fragrance, which adds this nice woody floral nuance. Again, the woodiness here is not going to be the earthy kind of woodiness. It's not going to be dark. It's not going to be dense or uh, too deep. It's going to be more of a, of a faint woodiness that you get with this rosewood that's infused in here. It's ever so faint and it's more in the background. I think the green, the vegetable nuances, uh, the herbal feel is definitely up front and center along with the Narcissus floral note that I talked about. Last but not least, what I do also get in this fragrance is a very nice, clean and crisp, soapy feel, especially from the mid into the dry down. So if you like soapy, clean, crisp fragrances, this is definitely gonna be one of those. Three words that I would use to summarize the new H24 by Hermes. This is going to be green, it's going to be modern, and it's going to be a casual type of a scent. Talking about performance, this is an eau de toilette. Normally, eau de toilette fragrances are very good for projection. It does project quite nice for two to three hours. If you spray your garment, it's going to push quite nice. Longevity is about six to seven hours a day's work, which is kind of like what I need with my fragrances. This is great for you know, office wear, so great, you know, great place to wear this particular fragrance. Casual office is perfect. Seasons, due to the profile, the greenness of the scent, you know, the floral aspect, I think this is a perfect spring scent, which is coming up ahead. I don't think this is dark enough or deep enough to wear when it gets cold, especially here where I live, but if you're somewhere where the tropical weather is what you get throughout the year, this will be a great signature scent if you're looking for one. But all in all, for me, it's going to be great for spring and good for the summer season. Ages is something to think about. This is not going to be for everyone. It's not mass appealing. It's not something that I can see younger guys gravitating towards and having this as a regular reach for fragrances in their fragrance wardrobe. I think this is definitely more mature. I'd say 25 and up, even 30 and up at times. But it is nice that I think ladies would appreciate this due to that floral aspect in the fragrance. So I think it's definitely androgynous. So more people will like this fragrance, but it's also more mature, which for that, I think it's not going to be playful, youthful, which means I think people 25... Uh, and under are not going to really gravitate towards this fragrance. There's no vanilla, there's no tonka, there's nothing of those sweet and playful elements that we're used to when we're looking at more playful and youthful fragrances. So 25 and up for sure. It's going to be great for casual wear, great for office wear, running errands, day wear for sure is what this fragrance is about. You can dress it up a little bit, although I don't think perhaps, you know, a suit and a tie or a t-shirt and a tie will do good. But I think if you're all backed out for like evening wear, I don't think this is dark or, or mysterious enough to um, accommodate those, you know, more sensual seasons, if you will, or occasions. So I think it's great for day wear, casual, office, perfect for this particular fragrance. So my final thoughts on H24 by the House of Hermes. This is actually a very nice release. I think it's really good. It's not great. Like I said, I love the fact that they released something that's not following the trends with your blue scents or sweet vanilla tonka and broxen type of a fragrance. That is a good thing. However, it's not a trendsetter groundbreaking type of a fragrance by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's not one of my favorites or math fragrances of all time. If you have to compare this to Tehde Hermes, I like Tehde Hermes, that particular collection, more than I like this new scent. Good thing is, this is androgynous. I think ladies will also enjoy this. It is, however, more mature, but definitely worth checking out. If you don't own anything from the Jardin collection, this is a good one to check out. If you own fragrances or the whole collection of the Jardin, perhaps this would be a little bit redundant to have in your wardrobe, but definitely worth try. This is a must-try fragrance. Really great release. Really good release, I should say, for 2021. But 
That's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments of this video. Have you tried H24? Did you like it, love it, hate it? At any given rate, I want to know your thoughts on this particular fragrance. In fact, from all the different Hermes fragrances and collections, I want to know your top three or top five fragrances from Hermes of all time. Guys, go crazy in the comments. Share your thoughts with me. As always, thanks so much for tuning in. If you did appreciate this video, don't forget to leave it in a like. I do appreciate the support. Touch the little subscribe button for me and hit the little bell icon so you guys get videos like these, new releases, top videos. That way you'll stay in the know within the fragrance world. And as always, whatever you choose to wear, be sure to, of course, wear it well and wear what truly moves. You guys, I'll see you right back here with another video very soon. Take care.